Hello everyone, reporting today for fun, I'm Ab Haas, and with me here is Team 10644 Cybugs from Saline, Michigan. They have been absolutely amazing this season into the deep as well as all the previous seasons, so I'm really, really excited to jump into their robot. They currently hold four out of the top ten scores in the world, with I think both the number one and number two scores. They are fourth by OPR at the time of recording, just an absolutely insane robot all around. There's so much to learn, and all of that is coming up on Fun Robotics. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more in order today. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Okay, so Cybugs, I guess my first question for you is your approach to the game. I would say that your specimen cycling is fairly unique compared to like all the other teams we've seen this year. Was this your first idea? How did it come about? Just talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so at the beginning of the year, we took quite a lot of time uh, discussing and uh, figuring out probably the hardest parts for us. We knew that the three main parts would be delivering in a basket, del delivering specimens, and grabbing from the submersible. Uh, we noticed that a lot of other teams in the very early year were focusing on delivering baskets. So if we decided to focus on in the beginning so, so that we could be compatible with most teams, um, uh, we are we are hoping to still be able to do both. But um, yeah, our outlook was definitely focused on specimens at the very beginning of the year. Yeah, and you know, I remember watching your guys' world record match and pretty much for like the most of the match you did that specimen cycling you got your 10 11 specimens then right there at the end you put two uh, samples up in the high basket so that was really versatile driving and now you know just jumping right in talking about the drivetrain and kind of the software base there anything fancy going on that you want to talk about are you using the new govilda mechanisms with the grip force how do you like those if so and what's going on for odometry and things like that yeah so we're using uh yeah, the new Grip Force and Canum, of course. And then um, we have two odometry pods along with uh, Pinpoint. And this is what we use to like know where our body is in Auton and just in general. So, mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. And as far as ratios go, is it like a 13.7 to 1 drive or something a little faster, a little slower? Yeah, it's a 13.7. Cool. 13. Yeah. yeah, and all right, let's 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 just get right into the intake. Definitely very, very effective. So from what I can tell, you have maybe two intakes we can say. We'll start with the submersible one. From from what I've seen, it's, uh, you know, you have your claw on your linear slides. Yeah, there, there it goes, whipping right out. So can you talk about some of the specifics? Just walk us through the workflow. Yeah, so uh, we knew that we needed to be able to um, uh, grab from the submersible very quickly. So we created this claw with uh, four degrees of movement. We can move, we can turn it so we can grab from the in outside of the sample as well as the inside. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this uh, allows us to line up as quickly as Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, let's talk automations there a little bit. I saw when you did those grabs, like it seemed like as soon as you had it, it whipped back in. What's going on there? Yeah, so we've set up uh, a thing where basically with a button press, it does multiple commands. Mm -hmm. So down, oops. Uh, with one button press, it opens the claw, goes down, closes the claw, and goes back to home. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, you know, I've seen how effective you guys are at both depositing specimens at the same time as kind of lining up for the next ones. Is that purely driver practice or are there any like camera based or sensor based automations you have going on there? Yeah, so it's almost all driver practice. We mm -hmm. really watch probably already 30 hours in total this year. Uh, um, <laughs> we've uh, last year, we realized that practicing was such a big part mm -hmm. of uh, robotics. Just all um, 
uh, coding and everything, you actually had to get good at driving. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think every season, uh, I at least I try to encourage teams to just practice as much as possible. And it's going to take your robots so far as, as we can clearly see here. Now, I guess the last question I have um, about your intake on this side, do you guys have a special name for it before I ask my question? Sorry, I just keep referring to it as like your front intake or submersible intake. What do you guys call it? Yeah, we just call it the intake and then this is our uh, outtake okay. delivery okay. arm. Yeah, so w with your intake, uh, you know, with the whole extension rules that have come about this season, it seems like a lot of teams are shying away from turrets or, uh, you know, just some of like the crazier mechanisms we've seen in the past. But that's definitely not the case for you guys. You know, you have multiple turrets and pivots going on with your robot. So what was the reasoning behind that? And um, can you just talk through that for a bit? Yeah, so um, when we go up to the submersible, we really... Uh, I wanted to be able to grab from like, if we go up to the front, we want to grab on the side or like super far out. Mm -hmm. So we use that 42 length limit uh, to grab as far as possible. And with the, our mechanism being able to like turn back and forth and uh, um, so we can really just uh, grab spec or samples as like officially as possible from one spot instead of having to go around the submersible to grab from others. Yeah, absolutely. And so, but you also use that pivoting to then deposit off of the side uh, in the human player zone. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. And so, yeah, with that, so like, were there any concerns with like the 20 inch limit or is that something you've had to deal with? And if so, uh, so how we dealt with the 20 inch limit is here we have our arm and that arm uh, is the perfect length that from both sides we do not get out of the 20 inch limit and then also yeah just our width of our bot really helps with that yeah it, it when you get it it seems like a very large bot but it's only about like 16 inches wide mm -hmm. and then like, on Got it. And yeah, last question before we move on uh, to the other mechanisms here. So I'm seeing a lot of 3D printed components, and I think those are great for early season. Have you faced any like rigidity issues, or do you think you just haven't had the type of match play yet where you're having a lot of robot on robot contact that requires like more robust metal or polycarbonate or what have you components? So last year, really started 3D printing a lot. Basically, everyone on the team uh, knows how to design. We use Onshape and. Uh, we found a lot of problems with stability and like it breaking. So we switched to uh, PLA plus, mm. which be working a lot better. And we haven't really had a break at all this year, Okay, but it happened. Yeah. Okay. And so now going on to your deposit first, uh, break down like your motors and servo distribution throughout the robot, right? So how many servos and motors you're using for your intake and then for your deposit. Okay. So we have, um, Four servos here that uh, help us grab in the submersible. We have uh, three servos up here uh, so that we can uh, uh, deliver to the basket as efficiently as possible. Mm -hmm. And so in, we have eight servos on our bot, or seven servos on our bot, sorry. And we have seven as well. Okay, so um, it, is it two motors for the vertical lift and one motor for horizontal, or how does that, how's the distribution yeah. there? two motors for the vertical one for the horizontal and one for each wheel okay okay yeah awesome so now talking about your vertical lift let's start with the lift anything fancy going on there what slides are you using is it string or belt based and are there any recommendations you have for teams to get it going as fast as you have it so four slides we use bwt link slides and we like them because they are faster and smoother and uh, yeah. So they're compact compared to the ones we've used in previous years. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't had, we did originally have a little bit of problems with um, them being very, uh, like, not so stable, mm -hmm. but we added to sort of fix that. And uh, yeah, we've had a lot of success the second that with them. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so now going on to your outtake, walk me through the different degrees of freedom. And also, was this the first design you considered for the outtake or were there any others that really seemed promising but you decided against eventually? So for our degrees of freedom, we have our first degree of freedom allowing us, with our slide allowing us to go up and down. Mm -hmm. And then we have a servo here that allows our arm to pivot side to side. 
And this servo right here allows us to pivot so that we are able to move, to grab and deliver specimens and samples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so talking about, that, talking about that transfer process, is that entirely automated or there's some things you still would like to automate? Walk me through that. Yeah, we've basically entirely automated our transfer. Uh, in our previous competitions, we had a lot of trouble with our transfer. Uh, so we redesigned our claw and um, different positions. Mm -hmm. So on the claw button, it uh, goes down, grabs our intake claw, let go, let's go. Uh, and then we just go ahead and bring our outtake claw up so that we can uh, uh, transfer. So yeah, it took a lot of trial and error. Mm -hmm. but we have very nice awesome yeah and so now talking about the specimen cycling specifically right i know when you guys go to pick up your specimens you drop off one into the human player zone while you pick the next one up so for picking up specimens in both auto and teleop do you have any automations there or again is it just a lot of tuning and practice and those things uh to grab specimens it is automated we move our ball back and then we do the click button and and then we press this and then we press the same button and it takes us to our delivering position okay then we'll go to the chamber we then push against the bar and it puts the specimen onto the bar okay and so it seems to me that your uh delivery process or like your scoring process here is a little different than what i remember from the world record video where there you deposit them upside down and then kind of pull up has that now changed any reason there or can you walk me through so, that? so first we use this claw it was longer and so we were able to deliver and then what we, what we would do is since we weren't able to deliver it up down because it would move the specimen mm -hmm. out of the way we grab it from the bottom up so that we would not have to be able to figure out how to angle it. Yeah, so our original strategy was we uh, would come from the top of the bar and then we would um, deposit the specimen by just bringing it down. Mm -hmm. But we found that a much faster way. Uh, um, actually in our world record match, our uh, alliance partner was using this technique in Auton. Uh, instead of just, instead of um, lining up, bringing it down, having to let go and everything, we could with our current one, um, we can just run straight into it and it'll uh, immediately go on the pole. Okay, so kind of at an angle uh, and then it just drops it on there. That, that makes a lot of sense. So now looking forward for you guys, you have, I think your league meets left and then uh, Michigan States and you know, hopefully world, we'd love to see you guys in Houston. Uh, what things are you looking to improve with the whole specimen and sample aspect of the robot? We'll talk about hang after. Okay. So currently our transfer isn't still isn't 100%. We're working on modifying our software to make that better and maybe even 3D printing new claws. Um, our uh, um, grabbing from the submersible is not very uh, efficient. Uh, we had uh, at the beginning of the year, we had a idea of using vision to actually like automatically see the correct color and we would go and grab it, but that's still a long way away. Worlds, mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping to be able to do that, but that's still a while away. Um, and so with that and the transfer fix, that's about all we have our ideas for right now. So yeah, I mean, obviously there's so much already great with your robot. It doesn't make sense to change the core design, just, you know, fixing things as they are here. Now talking about Hank, I think that's the elephant in the room. Definitely the biggest area for growth. Are you guys planning on implementing Hang on the existing robot or do you think it requires a full redesign? Yeah. So. Uh, we really don't uh, think we have time for a full redesign for our next competition. So right now we are attempting to implement um, a hang idea onto our current design. Uh, basically on each side we have this hook mechanism here. Uh, since we already have seven motors and the limit is eight, we have one motor running both of these. Uh, it's sort of a complicated design right now, but uh, it's still in early stages. Um, so basically our, it would hook on both of them would, and then we would have it, yes, yeah, so we go up, hook on, and then we, we would actually, it would pull it down. And then once it pulls down, 
the back would actually lift off. So we're just barely off the ground. We're actually having a problem right now. We attempted this with that bot, but um, our damage, our diamond free pads are still touching the ground. So mm -hmm. we're gonna have fading, but hopefully by our next competition, we'll have hang. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, just a little sneak peek there into what the future of Cybugs could look like. Thank you guys so much. This interview has just been really, really exciting. There's so many fantastic things about your guys' robot, the way you drive, just everything that you do on the competition field has been absolutely fantastic in this Into the Deep season. So reported for Fun Robotics, I'm Abhas, and this is Team 10644, Cybugs from Saline, Michigan. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more in order today.